So I've been doing some reading on how to be a better teacher, and they say I need to relate to my students. So I got my hood on, got my backwards hat, um, maybe a little bit of swag today, so that you can learn general form better. Okay, general form of a linear equation. Linear equation, straight line. Here it is, ax plus by plus c equals zero. And now our learning intentions. What you're supposed to be able to do by the end of this. First, you should be able to write an equation in general and standard form. So using this form and then another form called standard form, very similar though. Number two, to be able to graph an equation in general form using intercepts. We've talked about intercepts before. If you don't get it, go back and watch the video on intercepts. Number three, to be able to switch from one form to another. We learned a bunch of different forms in this chapter. You need to go from one back to another. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this, the forms we learned last day. Slope intercept form gives you a slope and an intercept. Okay, so if you ever see slope intercept form or you see the letter M, that means slope. So M equals slope. Let's try this again. See if we get any green. M equals slope. To graph a line, you need slope. How steep is that line? And then B equals our y-intercept, meaning where does this line cross our y-axis? If you don't understand the pieces of that, go back and watch the old video. Next, y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. First, the one thing you'll notice about all these is these all have a y and an x, a y and an x, x and y, x and y. Those are placeholders. That's what tells us it's a linear relation. The other parts are the parts that tell us what to do with this. m equals the slope. x1, y1, the x1 and the y1, notice those are minus signs, that's important, mean this is a point on the line. There could be lots of equations in this form, but x1, y1 is one of the points on that line. Now, how we work with these two new ones, notice there is no slope. If you're asked to find slope from this, you have to change it into one of these before you can find slope. But what do these A's, B's, and C's mean? Well, first, A, B, and C are integers. Don't remember what an integer is? Go back and watch the old video. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Basically. No fractions are allowed here. No decimals are allowed here. Okay. Next, A is positive. This A is not allowed to be negative. And the last thing is it equals zero. Equals zero. Standard form, very, very similar. A, B, C are integers. Nothing changes there. A is positive, nothing changes there. What changes in this one is, look where that C went, this one will equal C. Only the X's and the Y values are on that left side. So make sure you can decipher which form is which by name. Um, the equations are on your formula sheet, not given with the name, so that's why you need to know the name in case a question asks you to put it into one form or the other. Before we get into graphing lines that are on diagonals and things like that, there are two special cases that general form kind of wraps up. And we need to go over these because these are always ones that stump people on quizzes and tests. Because if you're looking for a slope intercept, notice this doesn't have an intercept. It's not crossing the y-axis. And its slope, straight up slope, is undefined. How do we write undefined? So when you have perfectly straight up and down or perfectly straight horizontal lines, here's how we name them. Let's do this. So we name them based on what occurs all the way through it. This coordinate right here is the coordinate 2, 0. This coordinate here over 2 up 2 is 2, 2. This coordinate up here is 2, 5. This coordinate down here is 2, negative 3. So Take a look at these things. What do they all have in common? Whenever we have perfectly straight lines, we name them by what they have in common. X is 2. X 
is 2, x is 2, x is 2. So this is the line x equals 2. And that's in general form because the x's come first. I'm sorry, this isn't in general form. This is in standard form. The x's come first, numbers on the other side. Now, let's look at a horizontal one. Let's draw our line from here to here. Now, for this line, horizontal line, perfectly straight across. It's not diagonal, so we name it by what it has in common. This point right here is the point 0, negative 1. This point over here, over 3, down negative 1. This point over here, this one is 7, negative 1. This one over here, negative 1, negative 1. So with this horizontal line, what do they all have in common? Well, they all have in common a y that is negative 1. So this line is named y equals negative 1. So for all graphing equations, if it's slope intercept, slope point, general standard, when it's horizontal, vertical or horizontal, it'll always be named by what each coordinate has in common. So make sure you get that in your head because it's always a trick that comes up on every test. Now we're going to look at how to graph something when it comes in the general form. And the problem with general form is it doesn't give us a point or an intercept to work with. Because to graph, you always need one point to start from. And it doesn't give us an intercept or a point. And the other thing you always need to graph is you need a slope. This one has no slope. There's, it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. There's no m, and m stands for slope. So the way to graph these is, the long way would be to change it into its other forms and then graph. Or a quicker way is to work from the intercepts. If we can find where it crosses each, well then we can just put those on. And to graph line, you just need any two points. We'll connect them. So how do you find intercepts? We've gone over this a bunch of times before, and you need to remember this for grade 10, 11, 12. Intercepts are the x-intercepts always have a y-height of 0. So we put y equals 0 into our equation. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a 0 in for the y. Anything times 0 is 0. So I get 2x plus 6 equals 0. Subtract 6 from both sides. 2x equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 2 x equals negative 3. So an x value of negative 3 is one of my intercepts. Now, the x-intercept, your y-axis is always defined by an x place of 0. So put x equals 0 into this equation. So 2 times 0 minus 3y plus 6 equals 0. Now my goal, <laughs> my orientation must be off in that corner. The goal now is to get the y alone. So I need to subtract 6 from both sides. Divide by negative 3. And y equals 2. y equals 2. So to graph a line, a linear relation is a straight line. All you ever need is two points. So I've got my two points. From here to here, and it will continue in both directions. So to graph a line from general or standard form, use your intercepts. Intercepts happen in those two spots. I've said it a bunch of times. You have to memorize that. If you don't understand why, come in. I'll, sh I'll give you a little activity that will get this set in your head. So. Put y equals 0 in, solve, I got x equals negative 3. There it is. x equals 0, put that in, solve for y. There it is. And connect them. Okay. The other way I could have done this is I could have changed my equation into a different form. And provincial exams love to do this. They like to give you a graph. They'll say, write the graph, or write it as an equation. But then all the answers are going to be in general form. So they're kind of testing a whole bunch of things at once, which isn't really fair. But 
I guess that's what you're going to have to do anyway. So, what is this line, I guess, in its general form equation? Well, to know this, this is the problem with general form. We can't look at general form and just see a slope. We can't look at it and just see a point or an intercept. So, when you have general form, you've got to change it into its other form. So, here's the thing about the one form. This was slope-intercept form. The key to slope-intercept is the y is by itself. That's the key to slope-intercept form. And that's the form we like to graph from. So, to get this into slope-intercept form, get the y alone. So, I'm going to move all my other parts to the other side. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Now it's in standard form. I still need to get that y alone. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And we always go with the letters first, then the numbers. Still, not alone, I need this y alone. Right now, remember, to do algebra, you do the opposite of what's happening to it. This is negative 3 times y. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide by negative 3. And I need to do that to the whole piece. So get y equals negative 2 divided by negative 3 is 2 thirds. Negative 6 divided by negative 3, negative, negative is positive. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So my equation, y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. And this is in our form that we like. So our intercept is 2. Ba bam our slope is two-thirds. Rise over run. If you don't got that yet, go back and watch every video from this chapter. Rise is two, run is three. So from this point, it's going up two, over three. Going backwards, it's going over three, down two. Connect that line. So two ways to graph these are, given an equation in general form, find your intercepts. Plot them, connect them. The other form or way to do this, change your general form into y equals form. That is our graphing form. Put it into y equals form, slope, intercept. Put them on, draw your line, okay? Very important that you understand this. If you don't get it, come see me. Watch the video again. Find a way to get this stuck into your head. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at taking a slope intercept form and a slope point form and putting them into general form. Now generally general form is not very valuable. It doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't tell us a slope. It doesn't tell us a point. But what will happen is your provincial exam, they like to give you a line. They say put it in general form or write the equation of. And these make sense. You will go, you'll take your line, you'll put it into these. And you'll go and you'll look at the answers A, B, C, and D, and for some reason, someone in the province thinks, hey, let's put two concepts into one question and put one that's completely artificially useless, general form, and make that the answer. So when they make you do that, you're going to need two. You've taken your line, you've put it into one of these forms, because they make sense. That's what everyone mathematician would do. But now, you have to put it into this form. So that said, the tools to do this are useful. It's just completely unauthentic that they would ask it in this way. So let's take a look at changing into general form. But first, what is general form? General form is A, B, and C. No fractions, just integers. A has to be positive. So if for some reason it's negative, we got to mix that around, and it will equal 0. So first, we don't all love fractions. So let's take care of our fraction issue first. Because it's divide by 3, I can take care of that by doing the opposite of divide 3, which is times both sides by 3. And when I times this by 3, what I get is the 3's cancel out. So, sorry, this is my x here. Um, when they cancel out, I get 3y equals negative 2x. 5 times 3 is 15. Ta-da! Fraction's gone. So now I need to put it in this form. It doesn't have to be on the left. It could be 0 equals the rest. Um, so 
let's do it that way. Let's move this to the other side. So I get 0 equals negative 2x minus 3y plus 15. What is the error here? They're integers. The zero's on one side, but a must be positive. So if I times everything by negative 1, well, 0 times negative 1 is 0, times negative 1 is 2x, times by negative 1 is plus 3y, times by negative 1 is minus 15. So if you ever end up with that a being negative, just change the sign on each piece. And really what you're doing is you're doing it to both sides, but 0 times anything is 0. Here is my general form. I've made the provincial exam happy. Next, over here, this is point slope form. Sorry, yeah, slope here, point, negative 1, 2. This is something you would have come up from a graph, but now they want it in general form. So we don't like the fractions, so let's times both sides by 5. So when I times this divide by 5, the 5 goes into both parts. When I times this side by 5, this is all one term. So this 5 and this 5 cancel, and I'm left with 3x plus 1. So I have 5y minus 10, bring the 3 into both parts because there's brackets there. And now I need it to equal 0, and I need my x to be positive. My x is already positive on this side, so let's just leave it on that side. Move the other pieces over. Subtract 5y from both sides. Finally, we need general form to equal 0, so let's add 10 to both sides. I get 0 equals 3x minus 5y plus 13. And there it is, there's our general form. So, no fractions, they're all integers. A is positive, it equals zero. And we're happy with that one now. So finally, here's your assignment so you can practice all these things, general form, page 384. Your questions do are four to nine, all of the letters, A, B, C, D, and E. For 12 to 13, only do A and C. If you're not getting them, do the extras. And question 18, good luck, stay classy, Matt.